Hey guys, and welcome to the channel, and we have an exciting video for you today, and it's exciting for two reasons. Reason number one is that we're going to paint up some nice, shiny, golden custodies. I've only recently picked up an army of these guys and have been working through them, but I've been kind of working through them for a reason, and that is the second reason that I'm excited about this video. These guys are going to be presented in our next battle report that will come out later this month, possibly early into May. It's going to be Custodes versus World Eaters. And a little twist to that is it's going to feature Angron leading his World Eaters against a Custodes force that is supported by the mighty Canis Rex. But for this video, we're going to be looking at how do I go about painting my Custodes. Now there's multiple different ways that we can do gold. You can do it really fast. The way that I painted up the majority of this battle force versus the way you're going to see me paint this blade champion in this video is different because I do a lot more dry brushing and you're able to get them on the tabletop a lot faster using that method. But I've showed you guys how I do some different dry brushing. So I figured we go with a little bit of a different route this time and instead go a little bit higher quality with our gold. How would I paint a miniature like a blade champion that I want to stand out a little bit different from the rest of the force as a whole? One of the things that I think people struggle with a lot when they're painting something like a custody is the fact that it's all pretty much one color. It's very uh, generic feeling in the color palette that you're using. Now, I've seen a lot of people do some, some different cool color variations with their custodies, uh, using silvers, using blacks, using purples, using all different types of things, but we're gonna go with the very classic look to it. But here's the thing, it can be more exciting and more interesting than just gonna lay down gold and that's all we're gonna do to it. We can do some things to add some different color variation, to add some more feel, to take the, the gold look and make it not look so flat and make it not look just so kind of bland on the tabletop. So I'm gonna show you some different things that we can do to take gold and to kind of push it up. Now, if you really wanna look at high quality, true metallic metal uh, from my channels, you go back and you look at my Ragnar Black Main videos and there's it's a two part video. And in one of those, I look at how I paint gold to a much higher quality than even what I'm gonna do in this video. Because if you're gonna paint a whole force of custodian guards, you unless you're gonna take a whole year to do it, you probably wanna move pretty quickly. So these are gonna be some quick tips, some quick ways to really uh, push your gold and make it look good. But let's go ahead and let's just jump right into our painting. To start, I prime the model in black. I just use Monument Hobbies black primer and I apply it through my airbrush. Whatever black primer you have, that'll work just fine. For the gold armor, I wanted it to be a deeper, a more uh, characterful gold. I didn't want it to be flat. I actually, it's a little bit more of a dull down gold for the rest of my custody army and so I wanted this guy to stand out a little bit so I'm using this rich gold use whatever gold you like and whatever you're going with I'm going to apply this sepia uh, shade and I want to show you these brushes because you want to use a brush that isn't a really nice one And here you can see after it's dried, you can really tell the change in the gold color there. Now, when applying highlights, all I'm doing is I'm taking this heavy metal by scale 75 and I'm mixing it in with my original rich gold. And I'm just adding more and more of it as I build these highlights. 
you can kind of see that it almost looks like I'm not even putting paint on there. In fact, the best way to really see it is whenever I would change the angle, I'd kind of be able to see the difference in that color change and because I wanted it to be very subtle. You can kind of see it a little bit better there, that color change that's happening. But I didn't want big jumps from the deep gold all the way up to like this bright silver and I think it kind of looks textury. I, I don't love the look of it. So I'm doing this very slowly. Now, if you don't like mixing paint, that's totally fine. Just use whatever golds you have. If you want to go up from like a deep gold into a higher gold and then into maybe a silver color, that's totally fine. The important thing to take away from this is to use very little paint in light touches to build it up. So it's best to use very little paint on your brush. You don't want the paint dry out. Make sure the paint's not dry because then you'll get kind of that dry brushy chalky texture. But you want to rub off a lot of the paint and just be very specific in where you're putting it. With the gold armor mostly finished, not completely done, but for the most part it's finished, we're going to go ahead and lay down all of our base colors. I do this in different ways. Sometimes I will paint up each part of the model to completion. Other times I'm going to base paint everything and then I'll wash everything and then I'll highlight everything. And there's one specific reason why I did it this way for this model. I'm going to lay down all my base colors and then I am using washes for this model. So then I'm going to come back and I'm going to put my washes down. Then I'm going to come back and I'm going to apply my highlights. But because I'm doing this model in a couple parts, you can see the arms and cloak are off. I'm going to go and put those pieces on after I've done my highlights and then come back and do final touches. Once I see what the model looks like as a whole, it helps me know where do I need to reinforce highlights? Where do I need to push the brightness? And where do I need to increase my shadows? You can see that with the first layer that I'm laying down on all of these bases, it's pretty thin. And there's one really important reason for this. I want my paint job to look smooth. I don't want it to have brush strokes or look like the paint is really heavy on top of it. And so my first initial layer of paint that I'm laying down for this base coat is not going to be completely opaque. I'm going to have to come back a second time. And honestly, most of the time I'm coming back a third time as well to get it as opaque as I want it to be. But because I'm laying down shades over most of these areas, I don't have to worry about it being completely opaque because leaving a little bit of that gold color coming through when I throw the washes on, it actually has a pretty cool effect to it. I would encourage you to play around with stuff like that. Try some different things and just kind of see what happens. My biggest struggle early on as a painter is I wanted to stay in the box all the time. And it really stunted my growth and kept me from learning a lot of things that I wish I would have learned a lot sooner. Take some chances. It's okay to completely fail at something. You learn even when you fail and become okay with that. Become okay with it not looking good. 
in trying to figure out how do I salvage this paint job. I have that even now. I try things and I go, this is not coming out the way I wanted it to. How do I fix this? That's a good process. With the reds, I think you can see even more how thin the paint is and the gold shining through the red. And so I believe the red was three coats, all, all red parts had three coats on it. Another thing to remember as we lay down these base coats is we've got the armor mostly where we want it. There's still a couple things we're going to do to it, but that means you have to be very careful with how you paint. Make sure you are not getting paint all over that gold, or if you do, quickly wipe it away. I'm going to show you uh, one way which I do these flat cloth surfaces. Um, and obviously when you're laying, laying down this base paint, once again, thin, this is going to take multiple, multiple coats, but I'd rather do multiple coats and it look good and it looks smooth rather than get it done in one coat or maybe two coats, but it's got a lot of brush stroke showing because this is a large section of cloth that's really smooth those brush strokes are going to show up. So take your time and don't worry about it all being laid down all at once. If you've watched my videos, you know that I love this dark aluminum color. Obviously any steel uh, silverish color that you want to use, this one flows very easily. So if you get this color and you haven't used it before, you really need to make sure you wipe a lot of paint off of your brush because it's a very strong color, but it flows very easily because it's actually made for an airbrush. So just be aware of that if you're using uh, this exact color or the, the Vallejo Air uh, metal colors in general. They're beautiful colors, but they flow off the brush incredibly easily. Like I said previously, I'm going to be using washes on this model, and I don't always use washes when I paint. I'm really using two. I'm going to be coming over all my silver bits with this Nuln oil. Another great option that I have is the black wash by Monument Hobbies, the Pro Alcryls. I love those. That, that's Actually, I prefer it to Nuln oil, but I just had this on hand. And then I'm taking this Agrax Earthshade and I'm putting it on all the red parts and I'm putting it on all the leather parts, uh, tying it all together. Now, there's a couple of reasons why I don't always use washes. Number one, I want to control a lot of times a little bit more of my shadow and what my color looks like. And when you use a wash, they can look really good, but they take away a lot of your control as to what's going to be in shadow. Um, as to how your paints are going to kind of shift color from the wash. And the other thing I don't really like about them is I don't like the semi-glossy finish that a wash leaves. But we'll be looking at that later and how I get around that issue for this paint job and why I want to get around it for this paint job. When it comes to highlighting, um, I like to use very thin paint uh, and I take a lot of it off my brush. I don't mind coming over the same part multiple times, building it up. I wanna create smoothness. I don't necessarily love, and maybe because I'm just not comfortable with it, and this is probably somewhere that I need to push myself, but I don't love to paint on really thick, aggressive highlights and then come back and glaze it all down. Personally, I don't do that a lot. It's not something I'm comfortable with. Not to say that it's not good, but it's just simply not my style. So what I do is I take a lot of the paint off of my brush whenever I'm doing this. Um, and you gotta make sure your paint is thin too, especially, or you're gonna end up with a very chalky 
consistency to your paint when you take it off your brush. But I want it to be smooth and I want it to go on really lightly so I can control it. One of the things that I think newer painters don't understand is painting is not like drawing. With drawing is you're putting the colors on and you once you put the color on, that's where it stays. With paint, you're moving it around. And if it's the right consistency, you put it down and then you move it to the places that you want it to be. And so focus on that. I think for a lot of new painters, they view their paint as kind of a marker where wherever they're moving, they're just drawing that paint on. Put your paint down and then move it, feather it out, uh, put it where you want it to go. Uh, don't allow it to collect just wherever you first put your brush down. Focus on, on little things like that and it will tremendously improve your painting. You can see that a lot of times when I'm painting, it takes me multiple brush strokes in order for the paint to really stick on there. Uh, it's because I'm using light strokes and a lot of times I'm using what I call phantom strokes. They're practice strokes so that I'm comfortable with where I'm putting it before I lay it on, but I'm laying it on, I'm laying it on very lightly. You don't need to press your brush down. If your paint's the right consistency, you've got the right amount on your brush, you just lightly put it on your model and it will come off. For the leather here, this is a little bit strange. Um, I tried something different. Um, don't know that I love it, but I wanted a little bit dirtier. Um, I wanted a little bit, uh, I know the custodies normally have like that reddish leather, which I think looks cool. I, I love that style choice from the Evy Metal team, but that's not what I wanted. I wanted a little bit more of a, a natural, kind of dirtyish looking leather. So I decided to make that jump from that deep, warm mahogany into this walnut and then up into a thar brown, which are browns mixed with some khaki uh, already into it. So it's a weird jump, but I wanted to try something a little bit different. You can really see there that, that the leather looks kind of strange already, but I'm going to do something here in a minute in an attempt to pull it all back together and, and make it blend really well. So in order to bring all these colors kind of back together and, and bring down the, the brightness and the color shift in the walnut and thar brown, I went back with some more Agrax Earthshade and kind of used it as a glaze really just to tie all of my colors back into each other. If you find things are sticking out too much, this is a great way. It doesn't have to be with a wash. It can be with your base color or with a mid-tone color and kind of come back over and glaze it and bring it all back in. With the reds here, because I'm working on, especially when it comes to the, the clothing, flat surfaces, uh, those can be a challenge for people because oftentimes, if you're used to edge highlighting or things like that, well, all of a sudden you get to cloaks, you get to pieces of cloth, um, things of that nature that are very smooth and cover large areas. And they're daunting because you want them to have more interest than just the edges but it's hard to do that without making that change from one color to the other jarring. So you can see here how kind of thin my paint is and it's really going on kind of like a heavy glaze and I'm focusing on smaller and smaller areas as I go. I'm going to start by painting 80 to 90 percent of all of the areas but it's not going to make the jump straight from that burnt red all the way up to that bold pyro red it's going to kind of tint that burnt red um, a little bit brighter. And then the more layers I lay down, the brighter and brighter it's going to get. It's a good way to do cloth. It's a good way to do those flat surfaces in order to 
slowly make that move up to brighter and brighter colors and it not be jarring and showing the lines between one paint to the next. This Aldebaran Red, no clue how you say it, but that's how I say it, is a really cool color when it comes to painting reds. Because if you've ever painted red, you know that that jump between red and then orange or yellow is extreme. This Aldebaran Red is just that perfect in between, I think, between them. I think it's kind of like a Wild Rider Red where it has a lot of orange in it. It's, it's a very orangey red, but it's still very much red and i think that those paints are so useful because those jumps from one color to that next highlight color can be so big that using this really makes it a lot easier now for the swords i cheated a little bit here and i apologize if you're not an airbrush person um, I wasn't too worried overall about how the power sword looked, so I decided to just grab my airbrush and throw it on pretty quickly because I wanted the focus of this video and this paint job to be the gold armor and some of the cloth bits and how I did that, some different ways to do those things. Uh, so honestly, this is the simplest thing ever. I basically just took my airbrush and slowly pushed these colors up brighter and brighter until we got to where we wanted to go. I go from a jade, a deep turquoise, to a light turquoise, to a uh, ice yellow for those brightest little highlights and do it that way. Pretty simple, nothing too complicated. But I do apologize if you are you don't have an airbrush and you want to copy this. I know that can be a little bit frustrating, so uh, I am, I'm sorry for that. But do your swords in however you're comfortable. Um, do your swords however you like to do it, whatever they look like. I think it's a good practice. Sometimes I'll do this. I'll see what someone does with an airbrush and I'll really like it. But I don't want to use an airbrush at the time, even though I have one. Um, I think it's a good skill to try to mimic some of that. To try to learn how to do some of that with a brush. Can be extremely useful. I've talked a lot about large pieces of cloth and those kind of smooth surfaces and how do we do them because they can be extremely daunting and this is one of my favorite ways to do stuff like this is to do it with a dry brush. Now a couple quick things about a dry brush. You don't want your paint chalky. That's it, Dry brush does not mean dried out paint. It means that it's not as, as thin down and as wet as your normal paint. You want a little bit of a damp brush. Um, you could use a dampening pad. I've seen people just lick the bristles a little bit. Wipe it off till it's just barely damp. Get some paint. Wipe off the majority of that paint. And here's, here's the thing. Here's the most important thing, I think, when it comes to dry brushing. Uh, people tend to think that if you're dry brushing, you need to be extremely aggressive. You need to really mash down on that brush. Don't do that. Use very light strokes. You can kind of see how many times I'm brushing over these areas and the paint is very slowly building. If you were to do it in one or two strokes, there wouldn't be a noticeable difference. But on top of that, because I'm working with flat surfaces, sometimes I'm using a stippling motion. A stippling motion is just kind of patting it, just tapping it with the brush in order to get some paint on it. And then I come over and use that brushing motion to kind of smooth it out and spread it around. But with dry brushing, you want to be patient and let it very slowly build up. And you can kind of see here that it doesn't look chalky because my paint is the right consistency for dry brushing. It has a much smoother consistency to it. Now, obviously, we could have used the same technique that we used for the cloth on the front of our Blade Champion, but I wanted to show you a little bit different way that you can go about doing cloth, especially cloth that covers a large section. So here you can see we've put the model together. I already had the base done to match the rest of the army. We went ahead and put him on his base. He's not finished. 
but I like to put them together to kind of see where light and shadows are going to fall, how those arms are going to affect the overall look, so I can go back and finish up all the different uh, details and finishing touches that still need to be done to him. Now this is key. Uh, because the model is supposed to be mostly encased in this shining golden armor, I really wanted to differentiate between the gold of his armor and the clothing of his cloth and the leather of his van braces, his boots, and things like that. So I use AK's Ultra Matte Varnish. I love this stuff. And I'm just applying it with my brush and I'm focusing on those areas. I'm staying completely away from his golden armor and that's going to bring them completely down to a matte finish. They're not going to look glossy and is really going to help create some distinction between that armor and the rest of it. For his eye lenses, this is just really simple. It's a deep red up to a mid red up to an orange and then a white dot in the corner. You can see a lot of other videos. I didn't get a great angle here. I wish I would have tried harder for a better angle. You can't see it that well. But I know uh, Trovarian has some really good videos, especially on how he does eye lenses. And that's kind of what I use to look at and, and how to do mine. Simple stuff. Uh, but it's amazing what an eye lens and a helmet can do to really sell the effect of a miniature. Because just like the face that we naturally look at when it's flesh, those eyes really grab our attention. And if you can get those down, make them looking good, um, you can see there, it makes a big difference. And you can even put a gloss varnish on them to make them look shiny and, and a little bit like they're glowing. Now for the cloak, I wanted it to be the same base gold as the armor, but I want to make it look more like it's cloth. I thought about doing a non-metallic metal gold here. I've done that in the past for some other stuff, like when I did Rogel Dorn and the gold on his cape. I wanted it to be different than the true metallic gold. But one of the things is I want this to show as being cloth. I don't want this to look like it's, it's metal. So there's a couple of things we're going to do. Number one, we're going to use this Reclaim Flesh shade instead of our Agrax Earth shade or our Sepia that we used on the armor, we're using this Reiklin Flesh shade. And that's gonna give it a slightly different tone, which is gonna help set it apart. But after we're going to actually use a the Ultra Matte Varnish on that gold again to take away the shine and make it look more like a cloth gold. We're going to use this cadmium uh, red. It's really an orange, I think. It's it's a very orangey red, uh, more towards orange than red, to kind of hit all of our edges, our brightest highlights on our reds, and it's really going to create some good contrast and set it apart. Like I said, we're just gonna matte varnish that, bring it down, and it will look a lot more like cloth. For the gems, it's a lot like the lenses in how you do them. I'm using these blue-ish colors. Um, they kind of go with the power sword, which is why I use them, but without being the exact same colors. And you want to focus the lighter and lighter colors towards the top. And I like to, to do it as like a crescent moon. You can kind of see they're doing the top and then folding it around one side. And you're going to get lighter and lighter. And just like with your lens, you're going to finish off here with a white dot, but it's going to go in that bottom part of it, or it's going to go in whatever part is, would really be the darkest to create that little bit of shine on it. And just to bring a little bit more definition and contrast to our swords, I'm going to use a glaze and kind of fill it in, bring back some of that brightness. It's kind of washing out the blades as a whole.
And there you go. He's all finished. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it was useful. Maybe you can take this and you can paint up your own custodies. Or if you have thoughts on how we can improve this, please drop that down below. So as you can see there, not all gold is painted the same way. It's not all created equal. There's some different things you can do to make your miniatures stand out, to make them a little bit different. Uh, things like varnishes go a long way to improving the overall look of your miniature and how you want to use them. Whether you seal the whole miniature in a satin gloss or matte varnish, or you do what I did in this video, and you pick specific parts that you want to be matte or you want to be glossy or things like that, and you can go ahead and you can do that to add some different feel, to give it a little bit more of even a different texture type feel to your miniature. But you're gonna see these guys again here before too long as I'm working on a battle report between Angron's World Eaters and this Blade Champion leading his custodian guards in battle against each other. I really loved doing the last battle report we did. This one's gonna be a little bit larger. We're going with 1500 points, but once again, it's featuring Angron, it's featuring Canis Rex. Those are two large models that are going to play a big part in this, so that it won't be a huge model count, especially with Custodes. You never really have a large model count, but I'm excited to get into it. Loved hearing your guys' feedback on the first battle report video I have got some great ideas for how we're going to go about doing this next one and would love to continue to hear your feedback couple of really quick channel updates number one we are almost going on one year this month in april it will be one year that i have been putting out videos and doing this and i just want to say thank you to everyone that has supported me to all of you that have watched these videos and to be fair if you're at this point in this video you've watched the entire thing and that's awesome i appreciate that we've got uh over a thousand subscribers already the channel has been growing been, been getting a bunch of good feedback and things like that continue to grow we're, we're going to continue to try to improve what we're doing and get better and we don't want to just keep putting out the same stuff we want to put out better stuff as we go with it coming up on one year of us having been putting out videos and being active on YouTube. The big project that we were looking at last year and been building up to was the Space Marine Army project. Give you a quick update on that. We are getting closer and closer to being finished with that. I've had a couple different things come up that have really taken my time and energy away from that and not been, um, and has kept me from being able to, to really push it and knock it out, but we're getting really close. Three armies are completely finished. We've got all the models for all the armies. They're all in some form of prime or painted. Uh, we're about to finish a bunch of them up here pretty soon. And then once we do, I'd like to get it done before summer hits, we're gonna do our big giveaway of two of those armies. So make sure that you pay attention to the channel, be watching it, be looking for that update, be looking for uh, when I announce that the project's complete because then we're gonna start the process of giving that away. But once again, thank you so much. I hope you guys found this video useful. I would love it if you guys would give it a like, if you'd maybe leave a comment with, with some of your thoughts, whether you liked it, with some improvement you could see, some different ideas or techniques that you would do differently. Uh, that would be awesome if you would provide your own opinions on what you would do differently than I did. So someone that's coming to these videos to learn off of them can go into the comment section and can gain even more information and wisdom on their painting journey, not just through my video, but through you interacting with it in the comment section as well. And of course, I would love it if you would go ahead and hit that subscribe button and become a part of this community going forward. Thank you guys so much for the watch, for the encouragement, for sticking with the video to this point. Until next time, I'll catch you guys later.